Hey, what's up guys? So I love having a remote starter, especially in the winter. So I thought it would be a cool project to hack my remote starter using my phone to start the car over Bluetooth. So check it out. If I go ahead and click the button there, we start the car. So let's take a closer look and see what's going on here. Okay, so I just want to show you a couple more cool things about this project before we dive in. Uh, over here we have the Bluetooth Low Energy Module, which is basically just hijacking the controls out of uh, the key fob for my remote starter. Uh, and if we go ahead and launch the app here, we can press connect, and it will automatically connect to this module, and you can see we're connected. The red LED is flashing. And now we can press start car and you see that the green LED on the key fob flashes so it would have tried to start the car there. Don't worry, I have it disabled. Um, and we also have a battery voltage readout here which is the actual voltage measured sourcing the module itself. So that's kind of cool and would be useful for you know like a low battery indicator, something like that. Uh, we also have a car battery voltage measurement which is what is connected to the red and black wire here. I've got that hooked up to a 12 volt supply and you probably can't see that, but it's reading like 11.8 volts or whatever. Um, and the idea there is so that when you start the car, the batter car battery voltage should increase since the alternator is then running. And you can use that to de detect if the car actually started or not. So that could be a cool thing. I haven't implemented that yet. Uh, so that might be coming down the road. Uh, we also have a temperature readout here, and it's in Fahrenheit, um, but so we're reading 74.8625, and we're using the DS18B20 one-wire temperature sensor, and I've done uh, a ton of videos with that, with that part, so uh, I'll have links in the description below. So that's pretty much the, uh, the, whole, the whole project, and we're going to dig in deep into how this whole thing works. I'm even going to open up Xcode and show you how I created this app. We're going to open the code up that's running on the Bluetooth low energy module. I'm going to show you how to export the project out of the web IDE, you know, from the atmosphere uh, uh, environment from Anarin. And we're going to export that out, bring it into the Wicked SDK from Broadcom, and then bring all of that together so that the app and the module uh, can talk to each other. So anyway, we've got a lot going on here. So let me first uh, tear into the hardware a bit here. Okay, so on the hardware side, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect here. I just want to show you sort of the, uh, the ecosystem here uh, of how everything is actually hooked up. So I'm going to turn off that voltage and first let me show you how these boards all work together. So you've got the Bluetooth low energy module board which is breadboard friendly and it plugs in to uh, this board here which is the sensor board which could be anything. So I also designed this and hopefully all of these boards will be for sale soon. I'm having everything quoted right now as at the time of making this video. So hopefully uh, everything will be for sale soon. Um, so anyway, you've got this sensor board which you can put your sensors down on like for the remote starter sensor board. I've got the interface over to the key fob. I've got the DS18B20. I've got the voltage divider for the car battery uh, voltage measurement. Uh, so it just gives you a little bit of a playground there to put your sensors and whatever else you might want to hook up to with the Bluetooth low energy module. So the idea here is that you plug that into that. And then to give it power, we have two choices. We've got a coin cell or we have a lithium battery which also has the micro USB connector for charging of the battery so that's kinda cool and basically that's all there is to the hardware I'm not gonna get into exactly how you know the DS18B20 is hooked up and everything because I made an insanely long video a while back on how to work with that part so um, that's pretty much all there is to it on the key fob, on the key fob side this already runs off of a coin cell, so I'm just borrowing power from, from my board and powering up that board. And 
I noticed uh, just by kind of poking around that the, the starter button on the key fob, the, the one side was hooked up to the three volts and the other side was hooked up to a digital input pin on, uh, on whatever little micro controller they've got running on here. So with this yellow wire here, I'm basically just running a digital pin uh, over from that mod, the Bluetooth low energy module to that one side of the button. And that's it. That's all there is to this thing. So obviously there's a lot of room for improvements. Um, I'm sure a lot of you would like to see me actually uh, show you how to build a real remote starter system, but uh, they're so cheap that you know, it's it's probably easier just to go out and buy a cheapy remote starter uh, system. And plus, I don't really want to get into uh, ignition systems and things like that. And, you know, <laughs> that could get kind of messy. So anyway, let's go ahead and jump now into the code because that's all there is to the hardware. Okay, so I hope you filled up your coffee mugs because we've got a lot to talk about here. Uh, we're going to cover everything from this Bluetooth low energy module code to the iOS code. Uh, sorry, we're not talking Android in this video, but everything should be able to port over to an Android system. So uh, let's go ahead and get started here. Um, make sure you go back and check out the video I made on how to blink an LED with this part because a lot of the same things will apply here. Um, okay, so... One of the great things about this part, and the reason I'm really using it, is because of its auto-generated code uh, feature. And we're going to see more of that as we go along here. But what we need to do first is create three functions in the web interface here for our project. So I already did this, and you just drag over function blocks, and we rename them. Uh, we've got three here, so we've got one called JSON, input JSON, return type JSON. Uh, length 128, uh, in a function called int, input type in, return in, length 128, and a notify function here, JSON input, JSON return. So we, that's all we're going to do here with the web interface is create these three functions. Over in the code view, it's pretty much just blank. It's the way it comes in. Uh, so nothing to change there. Let's go ahead and go to project, build. We're not gonna do anything with the auto-generated app because we're gonna create that natively in Xcode. Okay, so there it is, it built fine. Then we're gonna go ahead and let me just show you one more thing that we should have changed before building, but uh, if you go into project settings here, we can change a few more things like the local name, uh, I'll show you how to change that offline in the SDK, uh, and I left all these other things at their default values, okay? We're using an internal oscillator, so nothing to change there. I'm not actually using the UART, but I left all of those alone. Okay, so anyway, then what you want to do is go to Project and download the embedded source, okay? That's going to download as a zip file. and Hang on to that for a second, and let's jump over to community.broadcom.com, and I'll have links in the description below uh, for these things. But we need to go get the SDK from Broadcom so that we can uh, work on this project offline. Uh, I'm using 2.2 here for Mac. Uh, I think it's an older version here. We see there's 2.2.1, there's 2.2.2, but currently I'm using 2.2 and it, it works great. Uh, you can go ahead and experiment with these other versions and see if they work as well. There might be an issue with Windows 10. I'm not sure. So it might have to be, you might have to run the SDK in uh, compatibility mode or something like that. Okay. So once you got the SDK up and running, you want to, let's go over here, you want to take that zip file and you want to find your apps folder. So on a Mac, you go to documents, you go to wicked, and then you go into the SDK folder and then you'll see an apps folder here and you, you want to unzip that project you just downloaded from the Atmosphere IDE into here, okay? And then you launch the SDK and here we are. And it looks kind of confusing. They give you a ton of example apps, which is pretty cool. And you want to go ahead, let's refresh this. And you want to make sure that you see 
the app here that you just downloaded. Okay, let's not worry about the code side yet. We want to, uh, let's get into actually how we download the app to the Bluetooth low energy module. Okay, so we need to create a new target here. Um, if you don't see this, this window over here, make sure you go to Windows, Show View, and you should see Make Target over here. Okay, and you want to right click in here and create new. Uh, I already did this, so I'm going to go up here and click edit on the one I already created here. And the format of this target name is needs to be very specific, okay? So it starts out with the exact name of your app over here, BLE board underscore test, and then dash. And then this is the part name for the actual part that's under the hood of your Bluetooth low energy module. And I found that it actually works with a few different part names. But the one I'm using here is BCM920737 tag underscore Q32. And uh, I, I can actually put this uh, down in the description below so you can just copy and paste this out. And then you put in a space and then your address. So this is the MAC address of the, uh, the part. Okay, and I just want it. Sorry, I had this whole thing highlighted. It's just this part right here. Okay, and I actually have the MAC address set to a random value for now. Okay, just for testing purposes. And then you want to download. You could also put this to build uh, if you wanted to just build it, but we're actually going to be downloading it as well. So you see that when I click this, it will build it, and we're good. We, we, we are able to get a build out of it, um, but we're not able to download it because I actually don't have anything hooked up. But if I had my, my USB cable hooked up to my USB to serial converter plugged into that Bluetooth low energy module, press the reset button and then press this, I should be able to download it. And uh, it's as simple as that, okay? So now you're able to get the project from the web interface into the offline SDK and download it to the board. So that's a good thing to do right off the bat before you go any further. Just make sure that everything is talking and we're good to go there. So now let's talk about the code. So let's open this up and you wanna to go to callbacks.c. This is where all of the code lives for the project, okay? And we're talking about the remote starter project here and there's a few other things we, we'll need to pull up here, uh, like right here, I believe this is the one. If you go to the air get defines.h, these are your UUIDs that you're gonna need in your Xcode project. And you see that you know, the web interface auto-generated all of this stuff for you. So that's the great thing about this module. So now you've got the, you've got the UUIDs and they're actually backwards. I, believe they start they start up here and work their way backwards so when you're doing your scans or if you run one thing I just want to mention uh, you you might want to go and download an app called light blue and that allows you to go in so if I actually had this program running on my on my low energy module here I could run the light blue app and you can search for that in the app store uh, you can run that app and actually see, you know, all of the services, the characteristics, everything about the Bluetooth uh, project you've got running. So that's a nice way to kind of troubleshoot things out. So anyway, here's the UUIDs, and we'll we'll, we'll use those uh, here in a second when we talk about the Xcode project. But for now, everything that's running is in this callbacks.c file. Uh, a few other things we can talk about here real quick. Uh, if we wanted to change the name of the of the actual advertised name, we can change it here. So we're at, well, I actually changed it here to BLE board. Um, this is actually not accurate here, this 5,000. I actually changed it somewhere else to 1,000, but don't worry about that. This is where you would want to change your interval timer. So that calls a function at this interval time here. You could also change the uh, the power of the, uh, the Bluetooth low energy module as well. We're running it at full power at 4 dB. Um, 
Okay, so there is one other thing I want to quickly pull up here because I did change this. If you go to Anner and Control.C, you can scroll down a little bit here and you'll see some other things. So you see here, I actually changed this. And when you open yours, you should see this here, BLE Interval Fine Timer. That would be right here and I commented that out because I was just forcing it in this file. So I actually have it set to 1000, so no worries there. Okay, so I just also wanted to show you here that when you change the name, you also want to go into airgat db.h and go down here to where you see this uh, this uh, UUID characteristic device name and then just blank out your zeros or whatever your name is and put in the individual characters for your name so BLE board okay so anyway I just wanted to mention those things before we dive in here to the code and by the way I'm gonna have all this available uh, in the description below so you can download this out and uh, and play with it and uh, dig around yourself. So anyway, here's the code, and you'll see it. It looks very similar to what was in the web interface there, but now I added in all my code. So let's go right through it here. We've got the global variables. Okay, we've got a connection status variable that will change as we connect and disconnect from the device. Uh, temp C decimal. That's going to be the temperature, and a remote starter count. And basically what we're doing here is, you know, we, we, when we get a remote start command from the device, we set this to like two and then every one second we count down. So it goes two, one, zero, so that it holds the button in. And then when it counts down to zero, we let go of the button. Okay. Then we have our defines, which are all of the pins for the, uh, that are hooked up to different, uh, so we've got the LED pin, which is uh, P0. We've got the temperature pin, which is the DS18B20 data pin on P12. Remote start pin on P25. That's the pin that goes over to the button on the key fob for the remote starter. Uh, cat car battery pin, which is an analog input on 15. And then this is kind of cool. Source voltage pin. So this is how we're actually measuring the voltage sourcing the Bluetooth low energy module and this is on P11 but it's bonded to pin 27 as well so these two pins here are actually connected to each other internally on the part and if you go to the uh, wiki on the uh, for, for this part which I'll also have a description to you can see which pins are bonded to each other so these are actually tied together internally so when I drive the source voltage pin here high I can do an analog read on pin 11 and I can read my own voltage. So that's what I'm doing there. And I, it's surprisingly pretty accurate. It's, I mean, it's not perfect if you have to do like uh, an analog read on one of those uh, ratio metric analog temperature sensors or something like that, you probably don't want to use this or, or uh, at least uh, use a, a precise uh, voltage reference. Okay. Then we get into our functions, and these are the DS, DS18B20 uh, functions, which are direct copies over from the Arduino code that I've written for that video I did a while back on the DS18B20. So um, it was obviously ported for, uh, for this, and so a few things had to change because I couldn't do like bit reads, bit writes, things like that. Okay. Then we have the functions that come with the, that are auto generated from Anarin. So we've got the interval function here, and this is called every one second. And we could talk about that, but I want to jump down to void setup first because that's the first thing that's called. Okay, so in setup, it's kind of like the Arduino. This is ran, you know, one time on boot up here. Um, and the first thing we've got is the initialization. We're not using everything, so I just commented that stuff out. Uh, and then you, what a good thing to do here would be to actually go through and configure all of the I.O., even if you're not using it. And uh, that's because we want to achieve the lowest power consumption possible. And if you set this power mode to AIR power sleep, and then you configure all of your pins as digital outputs and write them low, 
then I was actually able to achieve just 30, 30 microamps of idle current draw. So it's just sitting there and it's, that's still with me being able to connect to it. So it's still advertising and I'm able to connect to it, but when it's not, when it's just sitting there, it's at about 30 microamps, so that's pretty good. So that's basically what I'm doing here is configuring all of the, uh, all of the unused pins as outputs and driving them low. These pins down here are what I'm actually using in the project. So you've got the remote starter pin, that's gonna be an output. Uh, we've got the LED pin, that's gonna be an output. And then the, the source voltage pin's gonna be the, uh, when I, the, the analog input that I'm reading the, the voltage into the device. Car battery pin is that divided down voltage. And then we've got the, um, oops. And then we uh, have the actual bonded pin to source voltage into the source voltage pin here, which is gonna be just a digital out. And for now, we're gonna write that low, okay? And then when we need it, we'll make it high because remember when we want to achieve the lowest power consumption possible, we need to have all of our digital outs driven low. Okay, and that's all there is to the setup. Okay, so now let's jump back up here and we've got these two functions here. We've got connected and disconnected. When we connect, we want the connection status to be one, okay? And then make that source voltage pin high so that now we can read it in and now we're not worried about power consumption as much when we are connected, okay? And we need that pin high so we can actually read that source voltage anyway. When we disconnect, make the connection status zero and make the remote starter pin zero just in case we're in the middle of trying to start and then all of a sudden we disconnect. We don't want it to sit there and hang high, you know, when we disconnect. So that's why I drive that low here. Uh, and then again, make that source voltage pin driver zero, okay? And then that would get us into that 30 microamp current draw. Okay, and then all the code is pretty much in this interval function that's called every 1000 milliseconds, so once a second. So we've got a whole bunch of variables here. Uh, a lot of these here are uh, just used for the DS18B20 code. Uh, we've got this notify string, which is 32 um, characters. And this is the actual um, array that, we're that we use to send all of the data up to the device. And we'll talk more about that in a second here. Okay, so when this is called though, then we also, I was just talking about the remote starter function and how that all works. You know, we set it to two and we receive that command and then every one second we count down and as soon as it hits zero, go ahead and make that pin low so that, you know, it gives you that held button effect. And if we're connected, if the connection status is equal, equal to one there, this is where we run the code to go and send up data to the device. So go ahead and make the LED high and then all of the DS18B20 code in here. So this is all copied right over from the Arduino project. Okay, and we also added in those functions and you can work through it. It's kind of confusing, but I do talk about this in an insane amount of detail in those videos. So I'll have links in the description below if you want to see more about that. Okay, so that's all over. Now we've got the actual temperature and uh, then we grab the source voltage here by doing an analog read on the source voltage pin. It's as simple as that. And then we do an analog read on the car battery uh, pin here. So that gets that voltage. And now we've got those two values and we've got the temperature. Now we're ready to send it up. So we do an sprintf and we create this string, okay? And this is going to be important when we talk about the Xcode side, but we have it format, formatted by separating it out with commas here. So in between the commas is where our actual data lives. And we're sending it up as integers. You could send, you know, unsigned integer. You could send strings. You could send characters. You can send all kinds of things. Uh, and if you Google sprintf, you can see the different ways you can format a string. And we just talked about this notify string here a second ago. This is where we're storing everything and it will look like this. It'll look like comma, the temperature, comma, 
the source voltage, comma, the battery, car battery voltage, and then we're putting a carriage return new line feed at the end there. Okay, now we've got our string. This is one of those things that's kind of quirky about it, uh, about the, the whole atmosphere uh, web interface. But this is how you actually send notifications up to the device. You have to put ID underscore notify, which is that function name we created. Okay, and that's in here too, and it's blank. We're not doing anything with it, but it's just sitting here and it's being used for sending notifications, okay? So if we shoot back up here, you'll see ID notify, and then the string we want to send, and that's this right here. Okay, and that's it. And it would actually shoot that up now to the device. So when we go over to the Xcode side, you'll see where we receive that in. Okay, and then we're done. So I'll make the LED uh, low and then wait another second and repeat. So every one second, it does that. And that's pretty much all there is to this code. If we get a remote start command though, that's actually performed over here in the int function. So we're going to send an integer into the uh, Bluetooth low energy uh, module. And it comes in through this function here as data. And I've got this, uh, what I'm calling a poor man's security code here. And obviously, you know, if you've got a real product, you'd want to implement some kind of real pairing or security here. But I'm just sending one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine down. And when I see that, then I make the remote start pin high, change the count to two so that it'll hold it in. And then I write the LED pin high, and then I've got a delay, and this is how you uh, implement delays here, and this is a microsecond function here, so a thousand microseconds, or one millisecond, and then low. So we just get a little blink when we press the remote start button over on the app, on the iOS app, and then we see the blink down here, and it will start. And we could also send data back, and I'm only returning a zero here for now, but we could return whatever we wanted, and we could have separate functions just to receive data back to the iOS app. Okay, uh, that's it. That's all there is really to this code. And then at the bottom here, we've got the DS18B20 uh, functions for read and write and things like that. Okay, so I hope you... Uh, you're still with me here. Leave a comment uh, in the description below if you guys are still watching me at this point uh, because now we're going to jump into Xcode. Okay, so here is Xcode and we are targeting iOS 9.2 for this and we're running Xcode 7.2. Now, I'm gonna do my best to keep the project um, that, that you can download in the description below as up to date as possible, but Apple is constantly changing things. So there's a chance that you may download this project and it may not compile. So I'll try to keep it updated as, uh, as much as I can there. Um, I'm not gonna get into how to get Xcode up and running and set up, but you do need to go to um, apple.developer.com. I think that's the website or developer.apple.com. Uh, get get your developer's license. Um, it's pretty cheap. You may be able to get it for free if, uh, if you're a student. Um, so check that out. Set all that up and then you download Xcode and put in your Apple ID and then it should just work. Uh, when you get further along and you actually want to deploy an app, then we can talk maybe in future videos about test flight and things like that and how to get your app through the App Store. But for this example, we're just going to be pushing the app directly to uh, my device here through the lightning cable. So uh, it should be pretty straightforward. Um, I've already created a, the app here and we're just gonna talk about it. It's a single view application written in Swift 2, okay? And here is the storyboard here. So we've got you know, the background the same color as my logo here. So we've got an image view dropped in. We've got the connect button there. We've got the remote start button, which is hidden uh, by default, and we're gonna show and hide that. We've got a connection status label there. Uh, and you, if this is your first time using Xcode, I suggest you probably wanna start off with something a little simpler, maybe just like a hello world type app, 
and play around in here. Uh, definitely check out other tutorials on YouTube on how to get started with uh, Xcode. And uh, I'm a huge fan of uh, Udemy. And uh, if you go to my website, I think I did a write-up uh, about Udemy and the, the uh, specific tutorials that I use for uh, iOS. So uh, anyway, though, moving along here, we've got uh, the remote start button. We've got the battery voltage label. We've got the car battery voltage label and the temperature label. Okay, and these are what we update once we actually get connected. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to the storyboard. I'm not worrying about constraints or anything like that, and I don't really care about different orientations or different devices. Uh, that's why you may notice that right now I've got the size at iPhone 4 inch. Um, this is just for testing purposes at this point, and obviously I would come back and clean all of that stuff up later on. Okay, so let's jump in. Oh, by the way, the uh, remote start button is called toggle button because when I first started this this uh, this app, uh, that's what I called it. And it was a, just a single button there. So anyway, I never I was lazy. And I never went back and changed it to remote start button. Okay, so you may notice here by default when you create your 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 new project here, you'll get view controller, which would be linked back to that. Uh, that screen there but um, there's two other files here you'll see btservice.swift and btdiscovery.swift and these two files handle all of the Bluetooth communication and uh, let me go back here if you want to find out more about those two files check out raywinderlick.com and I'll put a link in the description below, but this is actually where I uh, first started learning about Bluetooth Low Energy and how to hook that stuff up. So those two files were actually leveraged from a tutorial on this website. So I'll put a link in the description below to this. And I've I've modified them heavily for this, this project here, but those are my two files whenever I've got a Bluetooth Low Energy project. I bring those two in and modify them for the project, okay? Okay, so anyway, let's uh, jump in here uh, to the view controller. So we've got all of our uh, our var variables up here that we define, and most of these are strings that we're going to then push into those labels as we, uh, as we connect and disconnect and get updated. Uh, here's the view controller class here. We've got outlets for the toggle button, which is actually the remote start button. We've got the um, the regular outlet here for that, which which we basically use to change the uh, the title and whether it's hidden or not hidden, things like that, the parameters of the button itself. And then we also have the uh, the action for the uh, the button as well. So when we actually press it, this code is called, which we'll get into later once we talk about uh, the Bluetooth once we're actually connected because we can't start the car until we're actually connected. Okay, so more outlets here. We've got the connect button label outlet and its action here um, and then outlets for all of the labels. And again, if you don't really know what I'm talking about here, let me just show you how you make an outlet. So you click that. Uh, so you can pull up two windows side by side, one here with your, let me get rid of that, okay. Get rid of that, clean it up a bit here, get rid of the sidebar there. So what you do here, and I want to get, let's pull up the view controller there on that side. So once you create your storyboard here, you can click and hold the control button, not the command button, the control button, and we're working on a Mac. And you can click and drag while holding that control button into your view controller under the class view controller. And then that's how you create your outlets or your actions. Okay. And I've already done this for everything on this, but I just wanted to show you that quickly if this is your first time getting into this. All right, let's close that out and get back to the view controller here. Okay, so we've got all of our outlets. And then this is where the code is actually ran down here okay so the first thing we do is create the instance of the Bluetooth uh, connection which we'll talk about here in a second the other things we do here is create these new notifications here 
and we've got two notifications. We've got one for refreshing the screen. So when you know we get new data from the Bluetooth low energy module, you know we're in another class here in these Bluetooth um, files out here. Uh, this, these notifications allow you to update the screen from those classes. And when you get a request, let's see if I actually have that here. Yeah. When you call these notifications, it runs the code down here, these functions down here. So the refresh screen function as defined in that notification. We also have this one here. And this is, uh, this one I added in, and this basically calls this function app in background down here when the app is pushed to the background or the phone is locked. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I can save power and I don't need to be connected to the Bluetooth module when the app is in the background. You know, it's kind of a get in, connect, do your thing and then get out. But what if you forget to close the app down? I don't want it to remain connected. So that's what that does. Uh, there's other ways to do that obviously, but this is just a quick and dirty way I kind of threw in there. Okay, so anyway. And we'll talk more about that too. So the first thing though that we need to, to get into is this BT Discovery shared instance. And we jump over to the BT Discovery.swift file. Okay, and this is the this is a, a lot of this again uh, leveraged over from Ray Wenderlich's code. Um, and here is the uh, BT Discovery shared instance. And we create this here. Um, and if we kind of work through it, we're not going to get into the details of everything that's going on here. Um, but we've got different functions within this. So one for start scanning, stop scanning, disconnect. Um, and then when we connect, we want to call and get the services. And then we discover the characteristics and things like that. Um, so. The first, oops, didn't mean to do that. Okay, I'm kind of jumping all over the place here, but all right. So we connect, we we create the the uh, instance of this class, and now we can actually start scanning. And I don't start scanning right away. What I do is have this connect button here. That when you press this, then it will actually start scanning. So if you go up to the action for that button here, you'll see that. If the connection status string is disconnected, so we're disconnected, then we want to, with that instance we already created, the BT discovery shared instance dot start scanning. So we start, we call that start scanning function within this file here. Okay, and then you'll see here that we do a central dot scan for peripherals with services. Now you could actually put in um, your uh, service UUID for the device and we'll talk about that in a second uh, but for now we're just going to discover all all peripherals in the area all Bluetooth low energy peripherals okay and then we do we print down to the console looking for peripherals with services and we change the connection status string looking for devices and then we do a request on that notification so that it updates that label. And now instead of showing disconnected, it'll show looking for devices. Um, it's kind of bugging me. I'd like to almost show you how this would work. Let me just show you. If you wanted to only search for your devices, I'm just going to show you this. We're going to talk more about this later. But you would basically, let me just do it here. You'd grab the main service UUID, and we talked about this already. Okay. And it kind of looks, would look like this. Okay. So that's how you only scan for devices with certain services. Okay. But nil works as well. Okay. Then we go and update the screen. So now we're scanning. And then there, nothing happens, right? Because the, you push that button and that's the only thing it does is it starts scanning. Now what happens is it will find devices. And you'll, these functions will be called, auto, auto, called automatically 
in the background and we get did discover peripheral so this would be the next one that is called and then we print down to the council found something and we do some checks on it just to see if you know if it's a bogus device or there's nothing there and this actually happens quite a bit so that's why you want to have this in there and if that is if it is a bogus device then just return okay don't do anything more and then we do a print of the peripheral dot name and if that dot name is the name of our device go ahead and call it first um, define that as our peripheral globally and this is a good idea to do and I already have this uh, this variable uh, up here somewhere here it is okay it's a private variable within this class and we want to then connect to it so connect to that peripheral and it will attempt to connect to it you know what I might do here real quick let me plug in my device so we can watch some of this stuff happen. Okay, so I've got the uh, Bluetooth low energy module powered up. I've got my phone plugged in. We're going to go ahead and compile this and uh, download it to the phone. So let's let this run. Now, if I hit connect, so you see we have this Bluetooth on here print out. And that's because we have this this function down here, um, did update state. So this is kind of cool, and you can see if you know uh, if the Bluetooth is powered powered off, you can you know you can detect that. So you've got powered off, powered on, resetting, uh, unsupported. So you know if it's off, you can actually have you know that connection status just show the Bluetooth is off. You know, so it's a reminder to the user to turn your Bluetooth on. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit connect now. Okay, and you can see, found something. Found, oops, what's going on here? Let's go back up. Okay, so found something. Print, print the uh, peripheral dot name. We get this optional. We can fix that too, but we get the BLE board and then found BLE board right here and then it's going to go try and connect to it and you see that we also have we have this function here function connect to peripheral where the peripheral is you know passed in and we're passing in our uh, peripheral BLE there okay that variable that private variable uh, and then we go off and connect to it dot connect peripheral okay uh, and then print going to connect yeah so we see all that trying to connect going to connect now the next thing what would happen here we have this other function here did connect peripheral okay and we see okay actually it failed there on that first time going to connect started to connect so I put these little things in here just for debugging purposes started to connect and then we get and then we call the Bluetooth service, okay? And that's in this other file here. And that's where we go and discover the services and the characteristics of the Bluetooth Low Energy Module. And trust me, this might seem pretty complex, but it's it's pretty, pretty straightforward. And a lot of this you can reuse over and over again in different Bluetooth Low Energy uh, projects. Okay, connection status string now is changed to connected or con connecting okay and then we call that notification again so that we refresh the screen so that it shows that and now we're done scanning because we found our device so go ahead and stop scanning um, and then while we're in this file I just want to also mention that if we ever disconnect this is called so did disconnect and then that's when we clear out those variables we print disconnected our uh, all of our strings are changed uh, the button title is changed back to connect and then we update the screen but since we're actually connecting and we call this here the Bluetooth service here we could jump back into this file here okay so we get we jump into this now we've created this class an instance of this class and this is where you keep all of your UUIDs and everything like that so we've got the main service UUID that we just I just showed you in that uh, in the uh, Broadcom SDK 
and you've got the notif the main notify UUID, and then you've got your three function UUIDs, the int UUID, the JSON UUID, and the notify function UUID, which is actually different from this UUID, okay? All right, and then we've got the characteristics uh, that we're going to discover that are linked up to those UUIDs. I know this all sounds really confusing, but let's just move into, let's get into the meat of it here. So, um, did discover services. So you see the first thing it does is it goes and looks for dis um, <laughs> services and found services, okay? So it found services and that's why we get that here and then print off the services that you found so this is good for figuring out what all your UUIDs are as well so it prints out this and you can see there's our service UUID in the console down there okay a couple checks in there and then for service in peripheral dot services we go and look for the characteristics okay so now within that service, we can look for the characteristics and we expect to see those three functions. Did discover characteristics for service. Okay, so now as soon as it finds this characteristics, we see found characteristics right there and print them off as we find them. So you, if you look through here, you'll see that you've got the first characteristic there uh, you've got, and you just kind of look through these as um, um, you can see the UUIDs in there. So we've got the uh, 81, 82, 83, 84, and there they all are, 81, 82, 83, 84. Okay. And as we find these characteristics, what we want to do is scan through them and check to see if any of those characteristics match our UUIDs for each of the characteristics. And if they do, then that's when you know we print off found the notify UUID. So you'll see that found BLE notify UUID, found the int UUID, JSON UUID. So you can see all of that. And when you do find them, that's when you assign the that characteristic to your variable for the characteristic, okay? And then of course you need this here, peripheral.setNotify value true for characteristic, characteristic, okay? And then put this in as well, self.sendBT service notification with is Bluetooth connected, okay? True. So you just copy and paste that for every single one of your characteristics. And then in here, I finally just put, hey, when you find the notify function UUID, uh, change the connection string, status string to connected. Go ahead and refresh this, the, uh, the screen there. Okay, so now we've got all of our characteristics. We're good to go. We're connected up, and that's it, okay? Now we can use those characteristics to send and receive data. Immediately what's going to happen is we're going to receive data. Before we even press the remote start button, we're gonna get a notification from the device because at that one second interval, we're going to continuously receive new data. So the function that's called is this did update value for a characteristic. Okay, and this is where anything, you if we go and read out of uh, a value from the module, we'll, we'll get this right back. If we get a notification, we get a call to this. And that's why you'll see. Okay, I just had to change the uh, the module out there. I had a module that had the characteristics but didn't have any of the, up, the notification update code. So you'll see here that when we get, when we get an update here, found BLE notify function UUID, and then we get um, updates. So what we're seeing here is this did value, did update value for characteristic. And if the characteristic, see we're doing a check. If the characteristic is equal to the self.ble notify characteristic, then we jump into here. Okay, so this is 
this is where the code runs when we get a, uh, a notification from the uh, the module. You see, I have some of my debug stuff here commented out, but here's the kind of some of the goofy things we have to do to read the data off of the module. So we bring it in as an NS string, uh, as the characteristic dot value, the encoding, and it's a string. And we we have we, then we now we've got the NS string in, and then we trim it. Okay, all the white space and uh, new line characters. And then we have this string array. We create a new variable here. And we want to break this string into an, in, into an array separated by commas. So you guys might remember from the Broadcom SDK that we had each of the values separated by a comma. And then we go ahead and print that out. And you can see here, you know, we got some garbage. We got a 393, and that's the DS18B20 value the temperature in its raw form and then we've got the battery voltage in uh, millivolts so 3.053 and then the car battery voltage and then comma and then we got all that other crap that we put in there so now we've got all the all of our uh, values read in and then we just have to pull them out so you can see battery voltage string is uh, you know I've got some some conversion there, we take the integer of it first uh, because it is a string sitting in here in this array. So convert it into an integer first. Uh, and then we take the float of that because we're gonna divide it out by a thousand uh, to you know to convert it into volts. Car battery voltage, same kind of thing. Uh, except now we've got that multiplier on there because it was divided by 11 by the voltage divider by, a, I think there's a 100K and a 10K in there to, to, to divide it down. Uh, and we're we're also converting all of these into strings that all just be, you know, displayed on the screen there, and and that's why we've got this notification request here to update this the uh, the screen, and then of course we've got the DS18B20 uh, value as well, which we're converting out, and then of course converting to Fahrenheit, okay, and this is how you get the degree symbol there. Okay, so that's how that works. If we wanted to do an integer read of that integer function, same kind of thing. And uh, let's talk first about, let's do a remote start request. I know, again, we're kind of jumping all over the place. But if you were to call that function, you know, if you were to press the button, it calls this, this function here. And we want to do a check, make sure we're connected. Uh, and then we send that integer, that poor man's code there, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, to that characteristic, right, the integer, the function that we called int over there on the Bluetooth module. And then right after that, we want to read back. And this is how you read that return value. Okay, so we send and then we receive immediately. And then we do some of that stuff to, you know, same kind of thing on the app side so that it looks like we're actually uh, holding the button in so we set this counter to two and then uh, make it selected so it kind of goes blue when you when you press the button for for a second or two okay so let's go back over to send okay where is that send data so we bring our data in uh, it comes in as an int and we want to pass in the characteristic as well print this off so let's actually watch this happen here Can, oops I accidentally disconnected and I'm going to hit start car. There it is. So it says sending this data out to that characteristic. Oh, wh wh where is it at? Okay. And then we read in immediately a value. So that's all that's really in this here. So we format it out a little bit. Let me show you that. So sending the data, we format it as, as an NS integer, and then let the data be this NS data of the bytes of that NS integer, and it's four. It's gonna be a 32-bit value. And then go ahead and send it out. Self.peripheral.write value data for a characteristic of that characteristic, and then the type is CB characteristic, write type dot with response. And this is important. It's needed by the Anarin uh, Bluetooth low, the low <laughs> Bluetooth low energy module. Okay. 
All right, so we did that and then immediately did a read. And as soon as the read comes back, we this gets called. We get read in update. There it is right there in our console. And then we, we read it in, okay, convert it to an NS data, okay. Then we want to set up this empty array of four values, four bytes. And we're going to basically get the bytes. This is kind of kind of crazy, but it works. And there's probably an easier way to do this. But we want to store um, that NS data that we created here, this packet, take those four bytes and throw them into this array as four bytes. And then what we do, <laughs> this is kind of crazy, is, is take then this and take those four bytes and combine them into one integer, one 32-bit integer. And then we've got our returned integer there. And that's what all of this code does. And you can see it there. It says 0, 0, 0, 0, and then bam, 0. It combines them all. Kind of a crazy way of doing it, but yeah, it seems to work. Okay, and that's all there really is to it. And, you know, if you had something really complicated, you could have all kinds of functions to do all kinds of different things. You could have a function for every single pin, and we'll talk more about that kind of as we go through this. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, making like an RC car uh, type pro project, um, maybe a transparent UART type project where you've got like an Arduino board and you just want your TX and RX hooked up and you're just passing data back and forth with the Bluetooth module, things like that. All right. Let's jump back over into the view controller here one more time. Just make sure I talked about everything. There's some things in here that kind of changes the way the buttons look and things like that. Um, you know, like if you want to hit disconnected, you know, on the button. So that's why we've got this else thing here. So once we're connected, you can press the button again, and then it disconnects and calls these functions stop scanning and uh, dot disconnect. Okay. And in the update function down here that's called, uh, we're basically just updating all of the uh, labels on the screen, the button on the screen, and we want to do this with this dispatch async thing here. Uh, and that's basically just so that, you know, it updates the screen immediately on the, uh, the main thread there. Okay. Uh, and that I think is pretty, that's a pretty lengthy video here and it uh, kind of gets you, gets you up and running with Bluetooth Low Energy. Again, these projects will be available for download in the description below. So I suggest maybe kind of playing around with them. Uh, if you want to create your own fresh project and then just copy these two guys, these two files right in there and, uh, and then take it from there. And then obviously, you know, you can uh, pull in your own images, create your own apps. I use, uh, uh, I think if you just Google like make iOS icon, you can drag in any image you want. It'll create all of the, uh, the icons for you automatically. So uh, anyway, that is uh, pretty much it for me on this project. Uh, hopefully that uh, I still have somebody who's still watching this video, so and uh, hopefully it helps you out. So uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.